Welcome to the video for Chapter 3, Summarizing and Responding, Where Reading Meets Writing. <clears throat> In our last, last uh, lecture, we were talking about academic reading and how important it is to read critically and engage with the reading and understand what you're reading. And so now we're going to talk about writing um, and how reading um, is important to the writing process as well. So summarizing and responding. We talked about when you were reading a text that it was important that you stop periodically and check in with yourself. Um, if you can, write that small summary about that paragraph, that part, the even at the end when you're finished reading, you can write a summary. So by summarizing a text, you can begin to see and understand its main points and think about what it says. So by responding to that text, you are prompted to think about and actually say what you think. You, it's also part of the way your brain is processing information. Um, it reads it, it's thinking, and so by responding in text, you are prompting it to think about what you read and to catch that on paper. By doing so, you engage with the ideas of others. Summarizing aids, annotating which aids understanding. So we talked in the last segment about how to annotate, and we talked about how that would help you understand a text. It would help keep you engaged with the text. Um, it will help it helps you check in and make sure you're understanding the text. Another um, guideline for summarizing a text is to read the text very carefully. Um, you're skimming that article or newspaper or um, that essay, whatever it is that you are reading the text of it, you're skimming it. For general understanding, you're annotating, you're locating the main points. Then you want to try to state those main points of the piece concisely and accurately. Um, if you can come up with what the main points were, then that also is going to help you understand that text. You can describe in writing the text very accurately and fairly by using neutral language. You don't want to use biased language. You want to use language that's very neutral. You can use signal phrases to distinguish what the author says from what you say. And you want to use your quotations sparingly. You don't want to just copy and paste a whole segment and consider that a summary. That's not a summary. Responding. When you summarize a text, you are showing that you understand its main ideas. You're res that By responding, it pushes you to engage with those ideas, and it gives you the opportunity to contribute your ideas to a larger conversation. Um, when you're responding in writing to something you've read, you want to take a position. You want to analyze what the text was saying, and you want to reflect on what that text says. For any of your readings, like for example, in your book you have guns and cars are different, um, you could easily write a quick summary of that. Now, some key features of summary and response essays. If you are responding in writing to something that you have read, you want, or to an idea that is presented. You want to clearly identify the author in the title. You want to give reference to that author in the title. You want to give a concise summary of what they said in that text or that piece of writing. And you want to have an explicit response. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And then you want to support your response. Why is it that you agree or disagree? You've got to give those reasons and you've got to provide support for what you're saying. A lot of what you're going to be doing in college writing is we're going to read different readings and then you're going to have topics and you're going to be responding, possibly pulling in some of the things from um, those various readings. There are ways of organizing a summary and response essay. So you want to take a look at the visual on page 44. You want to with a um, you want to summarize followed by a response. 
You need an introduction and a thesis, followed by a point-by-point -point summary and response. So when we get to the place in the semester where you are responding to an essay or responding to a quote, you want to make certain that um, you are summarizing what was being said, follow that with your response, have your own thesis, your point that you're supporting, and you'll have that point-by-point -point summary and response throughout. That concludes this video on Chapter 3.